Hi guys, Jangro here. Down here, it's kind of dark. Let's, yeah, that's better. Let's go over here in the light. Here on my screen, there's a lot going on. I'm in a Valhelsia 6 world right now. It's running on a server. That window to the bottom left is my server console. I'm running on version 6.1.0 of Valhelsia 6. It is time to upgrade. This process will work with any mod pack. I'm just demoing it with Valhelsia 6 which has stated a number of times since version 6.1.0, which is what I'm on. And I am going to upgrade to 6.2.2. I'm going to show you how to do this on my local server right here on my PC. I'll also show you how to do it on a Minecraft hosted service provider. So no matter where your server's hosted, you should be able to do this yourself. It's pretty easy. Stick around. Please give me just a few seconds to thank the sponsor of this video, Apex Hosting. If you'd rather spend your time playing Minecraft rather than updating mod packs, check out a Minecraft hosting provider like Apex Hosting. They have 24 seven support to help you upgrade your server. If you want to do it yourself, I'll be showing you how to do that later in this video. They have high performing servers, one click mod pack installation, DDoS protection, always available servers, and you can get started in less than five minutes. If you do check them out, please use my link, jangor.com slash Apex. Be sure to get the 25% off discount and that supports the channel. Thanks for your support and thanks to Apex for sponsoring this video. All right, so let's do this. Up here in the upper right is the latest version of Valhelsia 6, version 6.2.2. And we can see here that if we try to connect to our local world, it's going to fail because we have mismatched mod versions. It also has a hint right here on this X. You're not running the same version. The server is on 6.1 and the client is on 6.2.2. So let's fix that. Back to the Curse Forge Valhelsia 6 files menu. We go to the version that we want to get and click on it. Don't just download it, it's the client pack. We need to go over here into file itself, click additional files and download the server file. This is exactly the same as installing the server in the first place. So we'll click download file. Let's get rid of this window. We don't need it anymore. And I'm going to drag this from downloads onto the desktop. And here it is right here. We need to unzip it. So I'll double click on it. It will prompt me to open the file, which I'll do here and click extract all. We'll extract this also to the desk. We'll extract this also to the desktop and show extracted files when complete is checked, which will give us the folder right away. So here's that extracted folder here. I'm going to close out and delete the zip file. Don't need that anymore. And here's our new server folder. So we can see here a freshly extracted server has much less files in it. And it doesn't quite have all the files that we need. So let's stop the server by typing stop in the console because we're going to start a new one by running server start.bat. You'll get this blue warning, click more info and run anyway. I'll bring the new window down here. The server is starting up down here in the bottom left. You went through this process when you set up the server in the first place. It's exactly the same. It's going to, it's going to stop us when it's warning us about the EULA file. Okay, now it ended with the EULA warning. Right, we need the server to run to its completion to create all the files. So let's fix the EULA file, press the key. We'll edit the EULA.txt, change EULA equals false to EULA equals true, and start it up again. I'm going to skip ahead because this takes a long time, but as it starts up, we are going to see more files get created. All right, now our server is started. All the files that we need have been created. We can stop the server now by typing stop. This is actually a fully running new server. If we're doing this on our local computer, one way to do this is to replace this world folder that got created with the world folder from my old server. At a bare minimum, this world is the most critical thing and the one thing that you want to save. So before you make any changes, you should make backups of things. But here's our new server. We can delete this file or rename it and copy this world over to it. And now we have a fully running server. This is the easiest way to do it on our PC, but I'm going to do this a little bit differently and show you a method that applies no matter where your server is running. It's kind of extra easy that we're running all everything on this on our PC here. But if, if our server was running on another computer, like on a VPS, like an Oracle cloud free tier, or on a hosted Minecraft server provider, we want to take these files and move them to that other location. And to do that, we need to compress them into a zip file upload them and extract them. So the files that are, are important here are config, default configs, kubejs, not all mod packs have kubejs, libraries, locals not needed, logs not needed, mod data is not needed, mods, patchouli books, resource packs doesn't hurt either. So if we take these seven files and compress them to a zip file, it's going to name that zip file named after one of the folders. I'm just going to rename it. 
something meaningful. Now this zip file has everything we need to update a server somewhere else. And if we just copy this zip file up to our server, delete or rename the old folders, and then extract this, our server will be updated. Okay, so let's pretend this is our server somewhere else, and we'll just copy this zip file over here to this folder. I might have FTP this up to a server as another way of doing this. We're gonna show you that on my hosted Minecraft server after I finish these steps, okay? So now what we wanna do is delete these folders, these same seven folders on the server. Now you can rename these. I generally rename these as part of my process so that if something goes wrong, I can delete the new ones and rename the old ones back. You could make a backup of the, of the entire folder. Backups are important. Backup plan is very important. But here, I'm just going to delete them. I just hit the delete key, they're gone. And now we just need to extract the zip. I want to put them into the same folder as my server. And here we are back in the server folder and the files are back again, updated. You can see the file times have changed. Close that window and now we run server start.bat in this server. Okay, here's an error. And this indicates that the version of Forge updated. So we need to copy the server start.bat and server start.sh files as well. So we should have put those into the zip file. We'll just replace those and try again. Now it's starting up. Okay, now our server is started. We go back to our, our new 6.2.2 client. Click refresh. Now we have a green check mark. The server is the same version as the client and we can join the server. Oh, hey, here we are up here on our updated Valhalla 6 server. Pretty cool. All right, switching gears and changing the screen around a little bit here. Let's take a look at how to update a hosted Minecraft server provider. This is Apex Hosting. This is my own server. And I'll show you a few ways how to update the server here yourself. So first we go into our server console and you can see it's running Valhalla 6 and we need to first stop the server. While that's stopping, we can hop over here into the FTP access menu. Here's the FTP login information if you want to use FTP software like WinSCP, which I have on my screen over here to the right. We'll take a look at that in a second. We can use a web-based FTP client right here, which is exactly the same. Same exact process here. I'm going to select these folders that I need to delete. Actually, again, as I mentioned before, I tend to rename these like to config dot like to config v6.1.0, which just tells me that this is an old version. Renaming these files is exactly the same as deleting them. So that will take a little while. So I'm going to delete these files. You'll note here that there's no libraries folder. On Apex, it's called jar, and we'll want to delete that. We leave local and logs and mod data, just the files that we're replacing. This is my world file. Definitely don't delete that. And there's also no server start files on a hosted provider. They have server start scripts of their own. You don't have to provide it. You don't have to worry about those things. In fact, we don't have to upload the libraries folder either. So I'll probably delete that. So we'll just delete these. I already stopped the server, so no need to stop the server here. Go back to browse. And now we need to upload the zip file. We can just click upload, drag the file right here and that's going to take a while to upload. Another way to do all this is to open up the same thing. This is the exact same thing in a Windows application, an FTP app. This is WinSCP, you can use FileZilla. There's lots of different FTP software packages. You can do the exact same process here and then just drag the zip file into this FTP window as well. You might prefer to use an FTP client instead of the web FTP client, that's up to you. FTP uploads tend to be slow, so I'll be right back when this is finished. All right, it finished. So now we can head back over to the browse window and go into the server directory. And now we can see our zip file is here. So even if we uploaded this with an FTP client, we still need to go here to unzip it. So we check this here. Again, all our files are deleted and we unzip it. We put it in this default folder. And there it is, everything's done. Back to browse, we can check it out. And here are the files restored that we deleted. Note there's also this libraries folder. We don't need that. We can delete it. It doesn't matter. It won't do anything. We also didn't need the server start dot bat or server start dot sh file. We don't need those in a hosted provider. They have their own startup scripts. Again, we could have uploaded them. It wouldn't have hurt anything. 
uh, but we could safely delete them. So I'll delete this libraries file, for example. Now if we go back to the server and start it up, because we deleted that jar file, it's going to recreate it and the server is starting up. Back to the server, we'll grab our subdomain and add this server. Call it Apex Battle C6 so we can tell the difference. It's not quite finished starting up. Okay, now it's done. Here we go. And here we are. This is in fact a different world. I had a different world on the server than I was using on my desktop. But there you have it. There is there is exactly how to update your mod pack on your server, whether it is a local server, whether it's hosted somewhere else or on a Minecraft hosting provider. Another way, if you are using a, a provider like Apex, is just hit that chat button down in the bottom left. A hosting provider will help you upgrade your Minecraft server as well. So if you don't feel like doing it yourself, that's part of having a hosted Minecraft provider. They will help you do it. Um, okay, well, I think that will do it for now. I hope this video was helpful. I enjoyed making it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I appreciate you.